Polypede works here. So, chapter 1060. We start off with a color spread that's very similar to one of the older color spreads. One of the very interesting things is that in the older version of the color spread, uh, the bear has freedom written on its face. Whereas here, it has We Stand for Liberty written on its face, which is very interesting. Um, it's very cool to see just the evolution of Oda's artwork from when he was like first starting out till now. Um, it's also very nice that everyone's in the uh, very same pose that they were in back in the day. Shame that Luffy lost his cool cross necklace, but that's all right. Okay, so here's the uh, the big thing though. Uh, we get another introduction to the second part of Luffy's dream. Though, before that, we find out that the uh, Straw Hats are not finding out that King Cobra has been snuffed out. Okay, and then there's argument about trying to go and say Vivi. And then Zoro, very interesting, reminds Luffy that we should actually entrust in Vivi as they left Ace to his own devices when the news kind of broke out that he was in a bit of trouble. And then we get a very interesting callback to the end of Alabasta where <laughs> members of the crew call Zoro um, various um, names <laughs> because he doesn't want to go along with the plan of a of going to get Vivi. But but like always, Zoro is the uh, voice of reason in the crew. However, we then are introduced to, like I said a little while ago, um, Luffy telling his crew for the first time the second part of his dream. Here's the thing about this, though. I think we'll actually find out what it is when the crew is actually complete, meaning we have all the people we're ever going to have and the crew is done. And I think a big moment would be made out of that, but we haven't had that yet. So I think that's the reason why we still don't know what exactly his dream is. However, I'm under the assumption that this is something fairly important as this is the fourth or fifth time that this has come up. Um, and also very interestingly, Yamato knows what this is because Ace told her back in the uh, flashback on Onigashima. So she is of a very unique club who knows about Luffy's dream. I find that very interesting. So this has to be significant um, in some respect. And to add to the list of people who know about this now, Karibo now knows about Luffy's dream. Uh, okay, here's okay. Here's the weird part about this. What purpose does Karibo have in the narrative moving forward? Because this is the same joke from Fishman Island, or going to Fishman Island. This is the same exact joke. I don't think anyone knows that he's in the barrel, but the fact that he's in the barrel is fascinating to me. And the fact that he has been like one of the most consistent characters since the time skip has started, uh, it's, it's, it's wild. It's actually wild. He has had a lot of development, uh, but I'm just kind of perplexed as to what his role is. Because it's kind of, how can I say this? It's kind of apparent that he does have some depth to him. He's not just a skis bag. He's kind of a complex character. But at the same time, I just don't think he's important enough to be sticking around this long. But we'll see what happens with him. Here's another big thing um you remember that town that ace visited during his hunt for blackbeard i believe it's the same town too that um the revolutionaries were first shown off in like all the revolutionary captains it is the uh lulucia kingdom right okay here's the thing eem nukes the place completely blasted wiped off the face of the map probably deleted from history from this point forward and the interesting thing about this attack is, okay, Sabo is caught up in it. He is on the phone with Dragon at the time. And I think what prompts this attack is that Eam somehow hears the call being made 
that Sabo is relating to Dragon about there being a king that sits upon the throne of the world, right? Which that sort of initiates this sort of extreme response, which I understand that. That makes a lot of sense. However, what's interesting about the attack that happens, it's a uh, it is kind of similar in devastation to uh, Rigo back in Skypea. I see where people were making connection with that. It is very similar. However, the interesting thing about this is that how bright it is, is being emphasized. Let me remind you, in chapter 1059, we just got introduced to a new batch of pacifista units, the Seraphim, right? The Seraphim use Kizaru's lasers, like the rest of the PX units. What's interesting about these streams of light that fall from the sky and make this explosion is that they're not unlike the Pacifista beams or Kizaru's beams, which makes me think Kizaru might be behind this attack. Like Kizaru might be the right hand to aim, and even though he's an admiral, I think there's more to him. Because, okay, here's another interesting thing about Kizaru that I thought about earlier on today. Uh, when you see all the admirals as kids, right? Everyone looks scruffy, obviously. Everyone looks like a ragamuffin. But the interesting thing about Kizaru is that he's studying. He's studying by lamplight, which is a very interesting thing to highlight that even though he seems sort of like a no good lays about, he's actually well studied and well read. At least that's the sort of idea behind him, which I find fascinating because the other two, uh, Aki Inunu and Aki Oji at the time that we have um, for reference as children, both of them are kind of depicted as street punks. So that makes me think that Kizaru has always been sort of perhaps seen in a more favorable light, <laughs> not to make the pun, but he see has been seen in a more favorable light than the uh, other two because of the fact that his abilities are now a main component of most of the Marines fighting force. It's really weird that he has this much emphasis, yet he doesn't really do that much on screen. And anytime he's is on screen, like in um, the manga panels or in other media, he's never depicted to be on the losing end. He's always depicted to be kind of having a laugh when he's fighting. Um, another very interesting thing about Kizaru is that I don't think anytime he's shown fear, I don't think that's a uh, serious expression of uncertainty. I don't think so. I think he's honestly playing the audience for a joke all the time. And what's interesting to that is he mentioned that he could take out both Big Mom and Kaido. Why would he say that? I think if he was given the go-ahead, he probably could do that if he, for in some way, is behind the attack that happened on this island here. Because why does it look like one of his attacks? I don't think he actually goes all out all the time because he just sees that there's no need but i do think there's another layer to him and this sort of laid back chill dude is just a facade that's what i think so he very well could be a bit higher in pay grade than what he seems but we have to wait and see but that's what i think because it's too similar to what he does this attack that we're seeing here it's too similar and light is being too emphasized as a key factor in this attack. At least that's what I think. Uh, do I think Sabo survived the attack? Of course, I think Sabo survived the attack somehow. He's on a driftwood piece somewhere or something. I don't think he's dead. Not at all. However, uh, moving forward, we cut back to the Straw Hats. And here's the weird part. Okay. We come back to the Straw Hats, it's a, uh, a small time skip. It's a few days on the sunny, right? So they've been sailing for a little bit. They're near a snowy island with severe cold weather. And then Zoro cuts a big eddy and out pop Jury Bonnie, who now has a bounty of 320 million berries. Okay, here's the weird thing about this. She's in kid form, by the way. Now, I want to ask, because I, I am Team Carrot still, where is Carrot? 
because it's weird to me that she just went back to Zoe considering that that would be out of character for her and when we left off with her she was talking to Nekamamushi about Pedro's inherited will so what Pedro was seeking to find the uh, the whole concept of the dawn is what I assume they talked about if that's true and she's not on the ship let's say is she in Karibo for example the Karibo attack her when she was hiding away and they're both in the barrel because that is a possibility but we have to wait and see I just find it really weird that when they were leaving Wano everyone got to say goodbye except for Carrot and among the group of allies that we've seen other than Kinemon and Momo obviously Carrot has been with the Straw Hats the longest and has been with them like what three arcs three four arcs and she has had development and she has had sort of the agency of adventure put upon her and she does want to explore she has an interest in adventure so for someone to have an interest in adventure it seems kind of weird to then ship them off back to their home country when they were so excited to get away from that place anyway i don't know we have to see it's not the new arc just yet but it's kind of weird if that's how we're leaving things at the moment especially when yamato who got comparatively way less development got to say goodbye like what three times and even got like another fight scene against green bull so it's a little up in the air. It's a little confusing to me personally. I know not a lot of people want to talk about this because a lot of people kind of write Carrot off. But I do think she should be on the crew just for the amount of development and the amount of agency she has uh, to be a character and for the, uh, the sense of adventure. But getting into Bonnie, this is interesting because Bonnie has been one of the more interesting super rookies in One Piece. Actually, I can talk about her in a whole other video. But for the time being, it's just kind of interesting that she's here now, whereas the uh, levely just happened. So it's kind of weird that she's at where she's at now, all the way from Mary Joas. Perhaps Kuma pawed her away? Don't know. I'm under the assumption that kuma could have pawed her sabo and vivi into different locations but i'm hoping that we get clarification on that in the future with that that's all i have for you today thank you for watching if you like stuff like this please feel free to check out my youtube channel poly p works and if you like what you see i would appreciate your subscription thank you so much see you next time